countdown for blast off. X minus five, four, three, two, X minus one, fire. From the far horizons of the unknown come transcribed tales of new dimensions in time and space. These are stories of the future, adventures in which you'll live in a million could-be years on a thousand maybe worlds. The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Street and Smith, publishers of astounding science fiction, presents... X minus one... Tonight's story, The Outer Limit, by Graham Dorr. We go ahead now in time to 1965. We're on a vast concrete runway set in the desert of the southwest. A giant metal ship stands before us, prow pointed for the stars. And in five minutes, the signal will flash and it will tear up through the atmosphere to... The Outer Limit. Attention! Attention! Clear field for takeoff! Clear field! Five minutes, Steve. Right. Warm her up, Charlie. Hang her over! I want to go over procedure again, Steve. Don't worry, I got it straight. We'll just make sure. Okay, I take her up on jets to 50,000, then I cut in the rockets. No lower, or your tail blast will burn out three counties. I climb four minutes on rockets, then start maneuver tests. Remember that, no more than four minutes. The ship isn't like those strato rockets that you've been testing. She's the first one built for outer space. If she works, you can go clear to the moon. If I'd have known, I'd have brought my toothbrush. Well, not this trip. Now, get this, Steve. You've got power there to clear the Earth's gravitational field, but remember, after you cut in the rockets... You've only got ten minutes' fuel. If you go beyond the outer limit and don't save fuel for the return, you won't get down again, ever. You'll drift out into space. Get that now. Ten minutes' fuel. Okay. As far as I'm concerned, this project is a lot more important than that cosmic ray bomb that they're testing out in the Pacific tonight. Well, the Security Commission brass doesn't think so. I don't see any undersecretaries under anything. Well, don't you worry, Steve. In the long run, our ship will make the CR bomb back page stuff. But in the meantime, it's just as dangerous. Now, remember, half the principles in this ship are pure theory, slide rule stuff. If anything goes wrong, we may have to scrape you off the landscape with a soup spoon. You have a charming sense of humor. Well, here's what I'm getting at, Steve. We're risking your neck in this test. If anything blows, we don't want to have the next man pull the same boner. So keep your mic open. Keep talking. If anything goes wrong, we want to know exactly why. And we won't be able to ask you. Let us know before you pull every switch, before you do anything. Got that? Even if you only have to blow your nose. All right, get those fuel lights away. Well, I guess that's about all, Steve. Hey, that reminds me. If Mary calls, I'm just up on a milk run. I didn't tell her today was it. How is Mary? She's okay, but she's due about now, and I don't want her to get nervous. Hey, I didn't know the baby was that close. Steve, you know, I, I really ought to be sending a single man on this job. What, and cut me out of a soft paycheck? Forget it, Hank. You know, you can't get anybody else who can take 15 G's acceleration when those rockets cut in. Yeah, I know. It's time, Steve. Yeah. I'll see you later. Don't worry, Hank. I'll sweat for both of us. Right. Button her up, Charlie. So long, Hank. So long. We'll give you the light from control. <laughs> X2 JTR to control. Are you there yet, Hank? Okay, Steve. I'm ready to go. Mr. Hanson. Ready on radar, Sergeant? Check. Mr. Hanson, you better see this. What is it, Elsie? Message sent up for Steve. Mrs. Weston just left for the hospital. What? Hello, hello, Steve. Yeah. Uh, stand by a minute. Shall I hold it up, Mr. Hanson? Uh, yes. No, no, wait just a minute. It's too late now. You gonna tell him? Well, maybe he's got enough to worry about. Hey, what's holding us up, Hank? Something on your mind? No, no, there's uh, nothing, Steve. I, I just wanted to say good luck. 
All right, Charlie. Give him the light. All right, Steve, I'm reading you clear. I'm at 20,000. Airspeed 600. It's running fine. Soundproofing works. There's a three-degree waiver in the AGY pressure. Got that, Charlie? Check. Dead center on radar, Mr. Hanson. 50,000 now. I'm cutting loose the port jet. Now the starboard. I'm off jets. Airspeed dropping. Now I'm opening the rocket ports. The switch sticks a little, Charlie. Oxy alcohol pressure, 350. All right, now I'm advancing the ignition key. Here goes rocket one. Steve. Steve, you all right? Yeah. Feels like somebody slugged me with a sledgehammer. Uh, airspeed now 1,200. Here goes number two. She's okay, Hank. Running like a Swiss watch. She's okay. Hello, Steve. Elapsed rocket's time is now four minutes. What's your altitude? Over to you. A speed 4,400, still climbing. Altitude, 297 miles. All right, you're at the outer limit. Level off for maneuver tests. You've got exactly six minutes fuel left. I'm starting a three-degree left bank. She's a little sluggish. There, it's all right. There's a low vibration somewhere. Maybe the cockpit cover. My view screen's a little fogged. Now I'm straightening out. Five minutes fuel left. Now I'm starting a three degree right. Hey, the ball that... What's the matter? What's wrong? There's something up here. Something shining. What are you talking about? There's something above me, Hank. I'm going to chase it. Steve, Steve, you're at the outer limit now. I can see it plain now. Now, Steve, don't go any higher. You've only got four minutes left. You've only got... I'm getting static. I can't hear you, Hank. It's dead ahead now. I'm going to make a pass at it and get a good luck. Here goes. Hey, it's swerving to meet me. It's dead ahead now. Look out, it's dead ahead. Hello. Hello, hello, Steve. Steve, come in. Nine minutes fuel gone. There's still no sign. Hello. Right, uh... Hello, Steve, what happened? Try to get the crash squad out. Tell the Army squadron to alert their search plane. Right. Nine and a half minutes gone. Hello. Hello, Steve. Steve, listen to me. What's happened? Where the devil is he? Hello. Come in, Steve. Steve, come in. Hello. Hello, Steve. Hello. Hello, Steve. Ten minutes. That's the end of the fuel. How long has it been now? Ten hours, Mr. Hanson. Nothing more on radar, Sergeant? The screen's blank. Uh, Colonel Carulli called in. The search planes are back. Couldn't well, find anything. Should be some trace. He couldn't have bailed out, could he? You don't hit the silk at 4,400 miles an hour. We either went past the outer limit and ran out of fuel or something blew and we'll find the pieces scattered from here to the coast. Why does it have to be the best man? Always the best man. Charlie, we've we got to figure out what was wrong. Right. Something must have blown. All right, I'll call him. Goodbye. Uh, Mr. Hanson, there's a message from North Northside Hospital for Steve. Well, what is it? Mrs. Weston is fine. It's a boy. Oh, thank you, Elsie. It's a boy, Charlie. Yeah. Fine, fine. It's a boy. He didn't even know that she went to the hospital. How am I going to tell Mary that? No, it wasn't your fault, Mr. Hanson. The ship was tested. Yeah, yeah, and we'll build another, and some other flying fool will shoot past the outer limit into space. Well, I'm getting old, Charlie. You can remember when I used to take him up myself. Now I've got to send other men. Look, it's a job, Mr. Hanson. Now I'm afraid. Every time I hear a jet go off, I jump. Every time I have to send somebody up on a new model, I start to sweat. Mr. Hanson. Yeah? I, I think I've got something on the radar. No flight scheduled in, are there, Elsie? No, the whole day's cleared. Yeah. It's coming in behind us. Here he comes over the building. Yeah. What crazy jockey is buzzing the field like that? Is that an army plane, Charlie? No, I can't see. Here he comes back again. I know that engine. Yes, it's Steve. That's impossible. Look, that's his ship. It can't be. He's circling back for landing. Charlie, clear the field. He's coming back in. Mr. Hanson, 
and there's not another ship in the world that looks like that. I tell you, it's got to be Steve. Thank God. Sit down over there, Steve. Quicker we get this done, the quicker you get over to see Mary and the baby. Elsie, give the order to check and refuel the rockets. I don't want anybody in here till I get Steve's reports. Bury any calls. All right, Steve, let's have it. What the devil happened to you? Hank, that cosmic ray bomb, does it still go off tonight? What are you talking about? Straighten out, Steve. Where have you been for the last ten hours? Listen, Hank, there's something more important. Now, come on, come on. I've got to get a report on the screen to Washington. So let's have it, will you? I've got to know how you stretched ten minutes' fuel to keep you in the air for ten hours. One thing before now, I talk... Now, look, Steve. Will you have the Geiger men run over the ship before they refuel? What did you run into? So help me, Hank, I don't know. But we better check and make sure it isn't radioactive. Elsie, add a Geiger report on the standard check. Steve, maybe we better have the medics look you over, too. No, 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 I'm all right. They said I'd be all right. They? Look, son, I know you've had a tough time, but we've had this field on the alert for ten hours, boy. One of the army boys cracked up looking for you, and, he, and he's hurt bad. So let's have the story. Let's have it straight. I, I, I don't know how to tell you, Hank. Hank, I saw something up there. At 300 miles? I chased something up there, Hank, and I caught it. Now, don't hand me that, listen, Steve. Listen, I was cruising along. Just starting the right bank when I spotted something. It must have been going about half my speed. It was uh, um, egg-shaped and smooth. I made a pass at it. And I came back for another. And then there was a humming sound. Humming? Sort of a vibration. And then I blacked out. I was headed straight for it at 4,400 miles an hour. I thought it was going to be the biggest smash since Hiroshima. And... What's that? Is there a drink in that bottle? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Well... What happened? Hank, I came to inside their ship. Steve, this whole thing has been a devil of a strain on you. I'm going to call Major Donaldson from the Army base, ask him to sit in. The psychiatrist? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let him run his tests. He'll tell you I'm not kidding. Because, Hank, unless I miss my guess... I've just been tipped off to the way the world ends. You should be getting drowsy now. Count backwards from ten. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. He's under. Now we attach the head plate electrodes. And the cortical pickup. Oh, look out for that wire, Mr. Hanson. 3 setting and 31.3. Now, uh, throw that switch, Mr. Hanson. I have to start him off by suggestion. All right, Steve. You're in your ship now. You're in the rocket. Rocket. You're in the rocket. You're in the rocket, and you've just sighted something strange. Now I'm starting at three degree right. What's that? Hey, there's something up here. Something shining. His memory pattern. We're picking it up electronically. Something here. above me, Hank. I'm going to chase it. It's piped through the audio circuit. Getting static. I can't hear you, Hank. This is where we lost contact with him. I'm going to make a pass at it. Hey, it's swerving to meet me. It's dead ahead now. Look out. It's dead ahead. Very blacked out. No telling how long, minutes or hours. What's that noise? I don't know. Shh. Where? How, how did I get here? What? Who are you? Is he seeing things? Galactic Patrol. What's that? Well, what are they saying, Steve? What are they saying? It's, a, it's about nuclear fission. They know about it. They know the danger of it. Long ago, they had wars that almost destroyed them. But 
Finally, they learned. Now they've outlawed war. Go on, Steve. They patrol space. When their detector picks up an atomic explosion, they send a patrol. They've been observing Earth, and they found wars and rumors of wars. What are they going to do? They've quarantined us. Quarantined? They've isolated all Earth because we're infected with a communicable disease. Because we don't know how to control ourselves yet. Until we learn, we'll be a menace to the whole universe. What is this nonsense? Quiet. How are they going to do it, Steve? Well, they, 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 they've spread out a layer here of a... I don't know what to call it. it it's all around the Earth. It's miles deep. And when there's an atomic explosion on Earth, the radioactive particles will drift up to this layer and set off a chain reaction. It'll go around the world in microseconds, and that's the end. Yes? Yes, I understand. I've got to bring back the warning. You're going to put me back in my ship to bring the warning. Now what? Blacked out again. I guess that's all. What does all that mean? It's what he remembers. You don't think that that really happened? No, no. Narco psychometry circuits produce what he remembers. It just means that Steve believes this happens. Oh, uh-huh. I don't like to see this. Uh-huh. I've seen too many top pilots snap. Steve is the best I've known. How bad do you think he is? Well, frankly, outside of the presence of this well-organized hallucination, there are no signs of unbalance. may not be too serious. If he had a more plausible story, I'd be inclined to believe it. Warning. Warning. Hank. It's all right, boy. Did you hear it, Hank? Do you understand? Yeah, sure, sure. We've been quarantined. Now, now, let me give you something to make you sleep, Steve. But don't you understand? They fixed it so that if we set off one more nuclear explosion... We will have had it. Of course, of course. Now, don't roll your sleeve down. You don't believe me? Now, take it easy, Steve. But the test, they're setting off the cosmic ray bomb, Hank, tonight. What time is it? 11.20. It's scheduled for midnight. Hank, we've got to stop that bomb. Let Donaldson give you the hypos. You've got to believe me. I saw them. I got the warning. If we touch off the Q-bomb tonight, we'll be the biggest galactic Fourth of July of all time. The whole earth will go up like a Roman candle. April 10th, 1965, the end. Look, Steve, you better calm down now. Don't you want to see Mary and the baby? You've got a new son, remember? That's just it. I want to see my son. I want him to live. If the bomb goes off, Hank, we've got to stop it. Mr. Hanson, I think we'd better get over to the base hospital. Hank, you've got to believe me. Sure, sure, Steve. Maybe there's something to it. Look, look, it's out of our hands now, Steve. I'll put it in a report, shove it into Washington in the morning. In the morning, there won't be any morning, Hank. You've got to call Washington now. Get the head of the security commission and postpone the test. Now, you know I can't do that. My neck would be out a mile. Besides, this is 1965, not 45. Twenty countries have the atomic bomb now. What's the use of stopping just this one? The rest will keep right on popping them off. Well, then we'll have to call an international conference. Can't you understand, Hank? The first one that goes off finishes us. It's the end. They've given us the quarantine warning. Steve, I think you'd better go with us to the base hospital. <laughs> Look, Steve... We can call up for a detail if we have to. All right. All right, I'll go with you. You don't need a straight jacket. That's the way, Steve. You'll probably feel better by morning. Let's go. Tomorrow I'll drive you over to the hospital to see Mary and the kid. Uh, Sure. Uh, Look at the ship under the floodlights. Pretty, huh? You'll be flying her again soon, Steve. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Uh, what's she doing out on the line? Uh, they refuel her? Yeah, we've got Clausewitz coming in tomorrow from Denver for another test. Figure we'd give you a day off. Yeah, that's good. That's fine. Hey, Steve! Hey, there you go! Come on, Donaldson! Hey. Steve! Steve, come back here! He's heading for the rocket! Not crazy! Come... Steve! Oh, get down off of there, Steve! We can't get at him now. That hood is armor glass. Hey. He's waving. To its control. The radio. Come on. I should have gotten help. Come on. The radio is still hooked up. Hello. Hello, Steve. Listen to me, Hank. You've got to call Washington now. Look, Steve, come out of the rocket. I'll call my men, Henson. Don't yeah. try anything, Hank. They refueled the rocket for tomorrow. Take it easy, Steve. Listen, you know what'll happen if I fire the rocket tubes down here? Steve, don't, please. It'll burn out every building for five miles. All of us in one big blast. What do you want, Steve? You gotta stop that bomb. You gotta call Washington now. They won't believe me. You 
You make that call or I cut in the rocket. I mean it, Hank. You hook my screen to yours in parallel. I want to see exactly what you're doing. All right, all right. Just don't fire those rockets. Get going, Hank. You got 12 minutes to make that call and stop the bomb. All right. I'm making the parallel hookup now. Donaldson, you think he'll really blast? I don't know. Up to now, I'd almost say it was normal, but this Hanson, he's liable to do anything. Steve, there, you're getting it on your screen? Yeah. Now put that call through. All right. Operator. Uh, visit screen to Washington. The visit screen circuits are busy, sir. If you try again in half an hour. This is a security commission priority. Break in. Get me a line. Just a moment, please. Ten minutes, Hank. Listen, Steve, I'm trying. Ready to take your call, sir? Washington Security Commission 3. Urgent. I want Undersecretary Herbert Ames. Washington 3. One moment, please. Hurry, will you please? One moment, please. Chicago. San Marco calling Washington Visa Screen 3. Urgent. Washington 3. One moment, please. What time is it, Donaldson? 11.51. You think he'll fire those rockets? He might. Washington. Go ahead, San Marco. Visa Screen 3. Mr. Herbert Ames. That is a coded exchange. I cannot accept your call without clearance. Listen, Washington, put this through. This is Mr. Hansen of Hansen Rockets Incorporated at San Marco Air Base. This is the priority call. I'm coded. One moment, please. I will check your code number. Get it through, Hank. That bomb goes off at 12. Will you be reasonable, Steve? Your call has cleared, San Marco. Washington visits screen three, Herbert Ames. This is your call, sir. Security Commission, Ames. Oh, hello, Hanson. Listen, listen, Ames. You've got to get me the chief. Are you kidding? He's at the test control room. Yes, I know, but get him for me. Hey, what's up? You look lousy. Or is it a bad circuit? There's no time, Ames. I've got to get him before the test. It's about the ray bomb. Uh, I can't take the responsibility. Get it through, Hank, or I blast. Hey, what's going on there? Ames, my project has a high enough rating. This is a priority A call. What? Well, it's your neck. Okay, I'll try to get him for you. He's in the control room, though. You'll have to switch off your screen and speaker and go on earphones. Too much going on in there. Security, you know. You hear that, Steve? I've got to cut the screen. All right. Eight minutes, Hank. Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. This is Hanson at San Marco. No, sir. Priority A request to cancel the bomb test. No, look, look, I'm serious. I'm deadly serious. We sent the X2JTR up today to the outer limit, and we uncovered evidence. Yes, on the automatic instruments. What's that? No, no, this possible chain reaction. No, I, I can't tell you the whole story. There isn't time. Yes, I, I'll bring the readings into Washington in the morning. You've got to postpone the test till you see them. Yes, I understand that. I understand about the press. I'll take complete responsibility for this. What's that? Look, I've worked on contracts for the commission for 10 years now. Yes, I have complete confidence in my information. You can record that. All right, all right, I'll, I'll call you back immediately. Goodbye. Hank? Hank! He's agreed to cancel. The ray bomb won't go off. Thank God. All right, Steve. You can come down out of the ship. Comes. He's opening up. All right, Steve. Come on down out of the ship. Sure, Hank. Hank, I was scared. I was plain scared. All right, easy now. It's all over. Bomb won't go off. Thank God. Hey, look. I want to see Mary and the baby. Can you get me transportation now? Hey, wait a minute. It's almost 12. They won't let you in the hospital now. I want to see the baby. For sure you do, but you've been under a strain. Now, I've got a shot here for you, Steve. Give you a good night's sleep. All right. Roll up your sleeve. Sure, sure. Now, that'll make you sleep. Sergeant will find you a bed. Come on, Mr. Weston. Well, good night, Hank. I am kind of beat. It's been a tough night. <sighs> sure has. Thought for a minute he was going to blast those rockets and send us all to Kingdom Come. Yeah. Quite a stunt getting the ray bomb test called off. 
It isn't called out. The call? Ames couldn't get the chief. I was talking to a blank screen. Bomb goes off in a couple of minutes. Oh. Poor Steve. He's one of the best. He was the best. One in ten million. <laughs> Some story of his, poor guy. For a while, he almost had me believing that quarantine. <laughs> That's a very common delusion. The end of the world. Last night. Never saw the stars so bright. Better be getting in. That wind is cold. Bomb goes off in 30 seconds. Poor Steve. You know, Hanson, there's just one thing. Yeah? It's outside my field, but I'm curious. How did he keep that ship in the air for ten hours? With only ten minutes fuel. You have just heard X-1, presented by the National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Street and Smith, publishers of astounding science fiction. Tonight, by transcription, X-1 has brought you The Outer Limit by Graham Dorr, as adapted for radio by Ernest Kinoy. Featured in the cast were Joseph Julian, Wendell Holmes, Joe DeSantis, Bob Hastings, James Dukas, and Freddie Chandler. Your announcer, Fred Collins. X-1 was directed by Daniel Sutter and is an NBC Radio Network production. Listen to your radio Though you may have a lot to do Do whatever you've got to do NBC will still get through With music and drama A life panorama NBC's always got something brewing Listen and you'll agree That there's always a smile From a twist of a dial To 